So in this lesson, what we're going to look at is something called a unit rate. And we're going to go ahead and learn what that is. We're going to look at how we can determine a unit rate. And then finally, we're going to look at how you can compare them. So first, what's a unit rate? So it's a specific type of ratio, and it compares two different units of measure. There's one more catch to it, and that's that the second value in the ratio must have a value of one. So let's look at some ratios and see which one is or is not, or which ones are or are not, unit rates. So when I'm looking at this first one here, $5.25 per ounce. Now, even though there's no one here, when we use the word per, we're usually indicating that we're doing something for one object. So this is saying $5.25 is being compared to one ounce. The one ounce is second in the ratio, so therefore this would be an example of a unit rate. Let's look at the one in yellow. So it says one tree to five kids, and remember the word two separates the two parts of the ratio. So the second part of the ratio is a five, but we said that the second value must have a value of one. So this is not a unit rate. Okay, let's look at the one over here on the bottom left, 18 kilometers per minute. And remember there's that hidden one. So if we're going 18 kilometers and it's taking us one minute to do that, that's that second value in the ratio, it's definitely gonna be a unit rate. 25,000 people per precinct means that it is a ratio because that's indicating that there's per one precinct. So two things that make it a unit rate is it has to compare two different units of measure. So it has to be comparing different things, money and volume, um, people and some other type of unit, uh, distance and time. Those are all usually going to be common ones that you're going to see with ratios. And what makes it a unit rate also includes that you have to have not only just two different units of measure, but one of the second number in the ratio has to be a one. So now let's look at some examples of some ratios and see how we can convert them to a unit rate. So we are going to go ahead and be using a calculator to do these. Sometimes we're going to be rounding, so we want to make sure we brush up on our rounding. So remember how you what you do for rounding. And let's go ahead and look. So we have 15 ounces to 24 square meters. And usually when we're going ahead and looking at a fraction, we got to remember that a division bar is a type of is the same thing as a fraction bar. So we actually can do this as a division problem. 15 divided by 24 is what we would do on our calculator. Now you have access to a few calculators, but I'm going to show you one that's really easy to get to on your computer. So I'm using Google Chrome and I have opened a new tab or window and I am going to just go ahead and actually just type in those two numbers. So I'm doing 15 divided by 24 and then it's going to pop up with a calculator. And so it's saying that 15 divided by 24 is 625 thousandths. So this is saying that, and that's the result I had in my calculator, this ratio as a unit rate would be 625 thousandths ounces for one meter square. So whenever we're dividing numerator of the ratio, first number in the ratio divided by the second number in the ratio, what we're doing is we're taking this and we're making it a one because we're dividing. Even though we're doing it on our calculator and not doing this twice, what we are doing is dividing the first number by 24 and the second number by 24. And that's why we're getting it into a unit rate because it's forcing the second number in the ratio to be a one. Okay, so now let's say you go to the grocery store and they have like, oh, they're having a sale on cookies. Is it a good bargain? Maybe you could get more cookies and you might have to pay a little bit more, but maybe it would be better if you did that. 
So let's look at how much we're paying for each cookie. So we're trying to figure out the price in dollars for one cookie. Now with money, we want to have exactly two decimal places. So if we end up with something more than two decimal places, we're going to round it to the hundreds place. So we have 475 and in this case, I can just go ahead and after I hit clear, I just type once I have the calculator up divided by 12. Okay. Now we got to do money. So our money is the hundreds place and we're going to have to do some rounding here. So remember the number after the one I want to end up with. So I want to end up with two decimal places. So I go to the third decimal place, which is the thousands place. And remember if it's five, six, seven, eight, or nine, I raise the nine by one. If it's zero, one, two, three, or four, I keep the nine as is. In this case, because it's five or more, I'm going to raise this nine by one. And that's going to make it end up being 40. So it's approximately 40 cents. I'm going to change that to approximately now. 40 cents per cookie. And if I knew the price and the amount in the other kind of package, I could go ahead and I can do some comparison shopping and see maybe it's better to buy two packages of 12 cookies because they were on sale and it made it cheaper per cookie. Okay, so now we have 283 students and 24 teachers. So it's very common in schools for them to go ahead and figure out this type of ratio so they can see if their classes are balanced because if a particular class is much higher than this ratio, they know that maybe there's too many kids in that class. If a class is very far under that ratio, then they know maybe they have too few students in that class. So they use this for balancing purposes. So I go in my calculator and remember we're doing it in this direction. First number divided by second number. So we're trying to figure out about how many students per one teacher. So we're dividing 283 divided by 24 on the calculator. So we have 283 divided by 24. And so this will give us, and we'll round this one to the tens place. So the nine says the seven should become an eight. So we have approximately 11 and eight tenths students per one teacher. So if a class had 29 students in it, then we know, ooh, that's really far off of what our unit rate is for our school based on the number of students and teachers we have. And maybe we need to look at moving some of those kids around. Okay, now what do we do with unit rates? Well, one of the reasons that we use them is we want to compare things. So let's look at something like who's the fastest. So we have two different distances and we have two different times. So we can't really just look at them and compare and say, oh, um, 200 is smaller and 75 is smaller than 210 and 77 seconds. So we'll go with that one. Nope, it doesn't work like that. So what we do is we convert each of them into unit rates. And when we go ahead and we use our comparisons, and so we get it. Now, depending on some of the numbers, you may have to go and into additional decimal places other than the tenths. Um, so let's see what happens. Okay, so if we go ahead and we take 200 divided by 75, so 200 meters divided by 75 seconds, it gives us 2.66666666. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and round this and I'm gonna use the symbol for repeating so I remember that it's repeating six meters per one Second, so putting a bar over a digit says it's a repeating uh, value in the number. Okay, so now I'm going to compare 210 meters to 77 seconds. So when I go ahead and do that on my calculator, it says I'm getting two, and the seven and the two are both repeating. So it gives me approximately two and 72 hundreds with the 72 repeating meters per one second. Okay, so if we went ahead and we took both of those numbers 
And I said, okay, well, which number is smaller? Well, I would say this one is smaller. But in this case, is that actually a good thing? Okay, so the question is, who's the fastest? So are you faster because you can go farther in one second? Or are you faster because you're going less distance in one second? Well, in terms of speed, we want the top number to be bigger per second or per mile. So in this case, the person who ran 210 meters and 77 seconds would be faster than a person who went 200 meters in 75 seconds. Okay, so when we're going in comparison, if we're trying to figure out which one's cheaper, we wanna know how much are we paying for one chicken nugget. So even though the ratio is written this way with chicken nuggets first, we actually can switch it to help us answer our question. So it's money to chicken nuggets. So about how much is it? So if I go on my handy dandy calculator and I do 7.99 divided by 30, that means I'm paying about, remember I wanna go all the way to the thousands to tell me how many cents it is. So the six tells me to raise that six by one. So that gives me 27 cents per chicken nugget. So now let's look at our other kind. So in this case, we have 5.99 and we're getting 18. And if again, if I go to the thousands place, the two C says leave that three next to it alone. So it would be 33 cents per chicken nugget. So which one is the better bargain? Well, the one you're paying less per chicken nugget for would be the better bargain. Doesn't mean you have to buy that many. Okay, so how much medicine should we get? So in hospitals, they often have to do conversions and figure out how much medicine to give per kilogram. So they can do different comparisons. Did the person get too much? Did the person get too little? Or did they get the right dosage? So let's look at how many milliliters this person got if they got 25 milliliters of a medication and weighed 120 kilograms. So again, you're just using your calculator and we're gonna round to the hundredths place. So the eight makes the zero into a one and so that would be 21 hundredths of a milliliter per kilogram. And in the second one, the person had 15 milliliters and 90 kilograms, which means they got, again, to the hundreds place, 17 hundredths of a milliliter per kilogram. Now, in this case, I'm not exactly sure what the dosage the persons were supposed to be getting, but a doctor would then go ahead, or a nurse could also do it, uh, a doctor or a nurse would then go ahead and look at what the dosage was supposed to recommend a dosage per kilogram is and see if they got the right amount. And usually there's a little bit of a range of how much. So this person, maybe they got under what they were supposed to get, but maybe this person got too much. Um, or maybe this person was just right, but this one might have been a little bit too much. Okay, so... What we've done is we've gone ahead and we have compared unit rates. We've looked at how you convert to a unit rate and we defined unit rates and looked at some examples and non-examples. And these are the things that you have to do with unit rates.